Hi, Cat's Cradle here. You'll hear many people tell you that you can't home can sweet potatoes, but that's just not true. Now, you can't can mash sweet potatoes because there's too dense and there's no way to tell that the heat has penetrated to the center of the jar. So we don't can things like uh, sweet potatoes or mashed potatoes or um, really heavy squash that's been mashed up. But canning diced sweet potato is just fine. There's not a problem with it. You look at your sweet potatoes and uh, like the ones I have on the table were given to me and there's quite a few blemishes on them. I've cut the roots off and I kind of cut deeply on the end because that's where a lot of the fiber uh, is. There's a spot. I'm going to cut that off. Uh, and I cut on both ends. Probably could have cut a little bit deeper on that one. Uh, you know if, you, if you're a sweet potato lover that they're very fibrous at the ends. This is a good potato peeler. I spent my whole life using cheapo potato peelers that I bought for a dollar at the, the dollar store, or, you know, wherever, your discount store, and finally got so fed up with them, I thought, okay, I'm going to pay the price for an expensive one, and this one was like five or six dollars. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe I went my whole life peeling with those terrible, horrible, old-fashioned potato peelers. This thing is awesome. I love it. It whips right through these tough potato skins. So if you do a lot of peeling and a lot of processing of food at your house, go ahead and invest in one of these great sweet potatoes. Now here's my plan. I always run that potato peeler once over the whole sweet potato and then I go back. You can see under the skin there's kind of a white pulp there. I don't like the way that tastes. That's very fibrous as well. See the difference? It's bright yellow once you peel that lighter color off. So I go around a second time and peel that white layer off. It's it's just not very tasty. You want to get down to the dark color. Of course, you know the dark color is where the sweetness is, and it's also where the nutrients are. So just get rid of that that unattractive uh, light layer there. Usually, when you're eating a sweet potato, that stays attached to the skin, so you really just don't even notice it. You're just eating the the luscious dark orange flesh. So here we go. I try to get most of the blemishes off. Some of them are a little deep. Occasionally I'll have to pick up a paring knife and uh, kind of go and dig in a little circular motion to get the, the deep blemishes off. But this looks pretty good. Yeah. A little bit of white there. Might as well go ahead and get that off. Here's what I'm talking about. A little blemish that goes deeper than I can pair, uh, than I can uh, scrape off with the vegetable peeler, there's the circular motion. Just dig the point in, hold it with your thumb, twist around and get that out. And then I'm just dropping them into some lukewarm water. That will keep them from turning brown. But I have found if food is ripe, if it's not picked before its peak of freshness, it very seldom will turn colors anyway. So here's a little bit smaller one. Same, same thing. Just peel it down until to get the white off. There's all the ones I've done so far. I just want you to see the difference in color here. See the dark flesh and the light. There, get my camera person to move it up a little bit. That's what I'm talking about. You want to get the white off. So just keep peeling them until you've got them all done and when they're peeled just put them in water. They'll keep, uh, keep them from turning uh, brown at all. And then now I'm ready to dice them up. Occasionally it'll come to a part on either end that's kind of fibrous and there'll be little gaps in the flesh. You just want to get rid of that. You don't want to be canning that because it will taste really spongy. Sweet potatoes are very hard so you need to exercise caution. You need to use a very sharp knife. You can see when you look to the inside of them, I don't know if you can really tell if the camera's picking it up, but it almost looks like Colby cheese. It's kind of mixtures of of orange and white. If you look at the bowl there, you can see it looks like I've just diced up a bunch of Colby cheese. Be very careful. Be mindful of your fingers at all times. I recommend a great knife and a good stout cutting board. And it doesn't matter how big or little you dice them, just as long as you stay consistent because you want them to cook all the same. So mine are, you know, maybe three eighths of an inch cubes, probably three-eighths, four-eighths, eighths, and then you just collect them all together like that. 
I don't usually layer them up and stack them up because the sweet potatoes are just so hard. I don't want to slip, and occasionally you do if you if you stack them up. So I usually do one layer at a time. When I get to the end and there's some really tiny pieces that are not consistent with the other side, I just put them aside and throw them to the chickens. They love them. Or I eat them. I like sweet potato raw, uh, and these were perfectly delicious. So I'm just almost done here, and I'm eyeballing that bowl the whole time I'm cutting these up, trying to determine how many quart jars I'm going to need. This is another a good reason for cutting them about this size, is that if you cut them in really big chunks, it's hard to get them to stack just right in the jar, and you don't get as much in the quart jar. And uh, a quart is what we need to feed our family of three uh, for a vegetable at dinner. And so if I dice them about this size, I can get a lot more in the jar than if I do them in really big chunks. I'm thinking probably looking at that bowl and how many were floating in the big red bowl when I had them in the water, I'm probably going to need between five and six quarts. So what I like to do is, if I think it's going to be between five and six quarts, I like to wash seven quart jars because I always want to be prepared to have enough equipment ready, enough jars, lids, and rings, etc., to hold the most, the maximum amount of food I think I'm going to have because I can't stand anything worse than getting ready for a canning session and thinking I have everything I need and then find out I'm a couple of jars short that I have more food than I need and then have to stop and wash those jars and get those ready. So I just always prepare for more uh, than I think I'm going to need. So I think you get the idea here. Just, just beware uh, that fresh sweet potatoes are very very hard and so you need to have a good knife and you need to apply a lot of pressure especially when you're making that first cut to cut the sweet potato in half so I think you get the idea here let's move on to the canning process you'll notice I have two pots heating on my stove the one on the left is my pressure canner I have the appropriate amount of water in the bottom, what's called for in my canning instructions. Generally it's about three or four inches in the bottom of the canner. I also have a rack in the bottom of the canner so that the, uh, the jars do not sit directly on the bottom of the pot. So uh, if you buy a uh, pressure canner, the rack will come with it. You will not have to buy it separately. If you buy one at a garage sale or something like that, you may have to rig up something to put in the bottom so that the jars don't sit directly on the bottom. I'm pouring in a little bit of plain white distilled vinegar. Just a couple of tablespoons is all you need. If you have hard water, uh, calcium can collect on the jars and make them look kind of cloudy and white, and the vinegar keeps that from happening. Sometimes I forget to put it in, uh, but I try, I try not to forget so that I don't have to scrub that white off of my jars. So that's heating up and then I have this other pot and this pot is probably uh, half full of boiling water and I'm going to to just very lightly blanch those sweet potatoes just for a few seconds. I'm not really trying to cook them at all. I'm trying to do two things. I'm trying to stop the enzymatic action that happens with all fruits and vegetables, which causes them to deteriorate. There's a, there's uh, are enzymes that will cause your food uh, to lose quality. Mostly it's, mostly it's a textural thing rather than a flavor thing. So I'm going to blanch them for just a second. The other thing is I want to get them hot because I want to pack them in my jars hot. It just makes a better product in my opinion. So I just load all of my sweet potatoes into my pot then put the lid on to bring it up to temp to go ahead and bring it back to boiling and I boil them for just a minute or so until I'm sure they're good and hot. Now let's talk about jars for just a minute. I have six sitting out here and I have another one on standby. I've checked all the jars to make sure there's no chips and cracks being very careful to look around the rim because that's where uh, you would most likely find a chip. All of these jars are very good they're impeccably clean. I've washed them with uh, soap and hot water and then drained them. 
they do not have to be sterilized because they're going into a pressure canner and the pressure canner will sterilize them for me. So no need for me to do that step. In fact, you don't even need to sterilize if you're doing a boiling water bath canning like you would for high acid foods, jams, jellies, tomatoes, that kind of thing, unless your processing time is going to be under 10 minutes. So uh, the jars are ready to go. They came out of a hot soapy uh, water and so they're warm for sure. And the one thing I like to put in my vegetables is uh, canning salt. So I put a teaspoon of canning salt into each jar. A lot of people will can sweet potatoes with a syrup because they like them really sweet. I just don't see any need to do that. If I want them sweeter when I'm cooking them, I can add it at that time. Uh, after I open the jar and I'm ready to eat it, but I don't uh, do it at this time. So the salt goes in the jars and then I begin scooping out my hot sweet potatoes into the jars. Here's another tool I really like. I wish I could have, would have got a shot from the side so you can see how deep this little gadget is. I bought it from Pampered Chef, probably paid more than I should have. I probably could have got it at a kitchen store, uh, but uh, you know, when I go to those things, I feel like I need to buy something anyway. So that's the thing I got the night I went to that party. And it is a wonderful scoop. It really holds a lot of product. So, uh, you know, you want to get you something like that instead of having to go back with just a little small slotted spoon like you would use uh, for stirring your vegetables uh, for supper. So here you go. My hot sweet potatoes are all in the jars. I actually only needed five jars. You'll see my lids and rings are soaking in the stainless steel bowl right there. I have poured boiling water on them to get them nice and hot. You do not want to overfill your jars. You want to put the sweet potatoes in just up to that bottom ring uh, right at the where it starts to uh, widen out uh, to form the neck of the jar. That is called one inch head space and you want to leave one inch heads of headspace when canning sweet potatoes. So now that my hot sweet potatoes are in the jars, I want to go ahead and fill the remaining space up to that one inch line with boiling water. So I use my boiling water kettle here. It's very handy. I could have used the, the liquid that I boiled the sweet potatoes in, but it's now kind of cloudy and it would not have made as pretty of a product. So I'd rather just use fresh boiling water. So I just pour it in and when the water reaches that, that bottom line, that's as far as I go. Typically at this point you would wipe the rim of each jar and I really recommend that especially if you're a novice. But these sweet potatoes are not cooked so I didn't get any sweet potato on the rim and the only thing that would be on them is water and I'm not really concerned about that because I'm going to put a wet lid on it anyway so I did not bother uh, wiping the the rim on this but I really advise especially if you're new that you wipe the rim on everything you do so the next thing I do is I use a little tool that I have here this is just like a little it's almost like a little plastic knife and I run it down all around the edge of the jar to try to release any air bubbles that may be captured in that jar and when you're canning something as chunky as these sweet potatoes you're going to get a lot of air in there so you'll be amazed you can run anything down just as long as it's not metal use a plastic uh, knife or a bamboo skewer or something like that to release the air bubbles and you'll notice on some of the jars the water level will really drop because you've released so much uh, so much air The next thing is to put the hot lids on. I have a little magnetic wand here. It comes if you buy a canning kit from Ball or Kerr and uh, it's really handy so you don't have to go fishing around uh, trying to get the hot lids out. So I just take one out and put it on the jar and then after that I reach in with a magnetic wand and get a band and screw the band down uh, and I screw it fairly tight. Uh, you'll hear finger tight, you'll hear you know really tight. I, I screw my lids down pretty pretty tight. Uh, I mean I don't I don't crank them down and use all the pressure I can but I want to be sure they're on uh, nice and snugly so I get all the hot lids on and all the hot rings on and then they're ready to go into the pressure canner 
here I am just double checking make sure it's it's uh, tight enough and I use a jar lifter to carefully set my jars into my canner and I let them process for the appropriate time the heat is already on I have a glass cooktop stove and the heat is already on and so when I get all my jars in there I put my lid on and then I let the canner heat up till it gets really hot and you know it's hot enough when steam begins to come out of the little vent at the top of the lid and I let it steam the steam come out I mean I let it billow out for at least 10 minutes before I put the weight on my pressure canner and actually begin timing the process for sweet potatoes it's 90 minutes for quarts 75 minutes for pints I watch the gauge very carefully if you're at a thousand feet elevation or below it's 11 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes for a quart of sweet potatoes if you should step away from your canner and come back and notice that the pressure has dropped below 11 pounds you must start the timing process completely over it's one of the reasons I never step away from the canner the other reason is that if you step away heat could build in your canner and drive the uh, the pressure up and you don't want that to happen sometimes if I walk away even only for a second especially at the very beginning of the process it's very easy for that pressure to get away from me and get up to 13 14 15 pounds and you don't want that to happen because you want the pressure to stay very consistent so I recommend that you stay very close to your canner and watch it during the canning process but again if the pressure were to drop below 11 pounds then you have to start the timing process completely over at the uh, end of the canning time when my these were quartz so I processed them for 90 minutes at the end of 90 minutes I turned the heat off of my burner and waited for the gauge to return to zero I'm waiting for that pressure to drop before I take off the lid now with new canners uh, it's very it's almost I mean it's impossible for you to take the lid off uh, early because it has a locking mechanism and it won't do that but you and nevertheless even if yours doesn't have the locking mechanism you want the gauge to get all the way to zero before you take the lid off you must take the lid off very carefully because there's still a tremendous amount of steam inside of the canner so be very careful use uh, I recommend oven mitts uh, as you go to take the canner off and certainly open it away from your face so that the steam, steam vents out away from you now some people will tell you that uh, they just turn their canner off and then they go to bed at night and they take their cans out in the morning that's not recommended it's also not recommended that you just let it sit on your counter for several hours before you take your cans out the reason for not doing that is you want to get a great seal on your product and the way to do that is to take those hot jars out of the canner and set them on a towel on your counter and let the temperature change go ahead and draw a great vacuum on that jar so don't let your jars cool down in the canner go ahead and bring them on out uh, you want to set them on a towel on your counter and you want to be sure there's no drafts I usually have a fan running in my kitchen I always turn the fan off as I'm taking jars out because I don't want them to cool too quickly and accidentally crack my jar you will notice that there's a little bit of space on the bottom of my jar where some of the sweet potatoes have slightly floated up that's not very unusual it's very difficult to pack these any tighter than they'll go because the sweet potatoes are very hard had I not heated them prior to putting them in the jar there would have been even more space at the bottom so this is not unusual don't let it worry you all of my jars sealed the sweet potatoes look beautiful sometimes people worry about them turning a little bit of a dark color and if you're worried about that you can add two tablespoons of either lemon juice or orange juice right about the time that you add the salt you can just go ahead and put that in your jar to ensure they don't turn colors I generally don't have a problem if the sweet potatoes are ripe enough so I didn't add it I let my hot jars sit overnight the next morning I come back and check and make sure they really are all sealed and they were and then I take all of the rings off after the rings are off then I wash each jar with warm soapy water to get any food residue any juice uh, any stickiness off I really do set my jars in the sink 
and uh, wash them very, very well. I then rinse them, being sure I get all the soap off, and then dry them with a clean dishcloth. I then take a perma pen and label each one with what the product is and the date I canned it. Of course, freshly dug sweet potatoes will store for several months in a cool, dark, dry place, but I can store them for several years if I can them like I have showed you here in this video. This is what I call my fast food because when I want sweet potato, all I have to do is go get a jar out of my pantry, pop open the lid, heat it up, season it however I want, possibly with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, uh, maybe a little bit of maple syrup, and I've got delicious sweet potato to eat any time of the year I want. I love storing sweet potatoes in my in my food storage because they're loaded with vitamins, minerals, and and fiber. Uh, they're a rare source of vitamin A. That's kind of a difficult one to get in your food storage, uh, and sweet potatoes contain plenty of it. I hope you'll try this. I really like canned sweet potatoes, and uh, there's just so many things you can do with them. You can do anything you can do with a regular baked sweet potato. Uh, you can mash them up and put them in uh, sweet potato bread or sweet potato pie or eat them as a side dish uh, to a lovely meal. I hope you'll give it a try. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this is Cat's Cradle.